Japan is a country more advanced and cultured than any other. Whether it's food, scenic tourist destinations, entertainment, technological prowess, or even the lifestyle of locals, there is no match for Japan. The country has built a distinct and extraordinary reputation for itself over the past few decades. And now, we find things in Japan that we can't imagine coming across in any other country. The Japanese are no doubt way ahead of any other nation in almost every aspect. Here are 15 things that only happen in Japan. 1. Girlfriend Rentals In recent years, the trend of renting friends, family, members, partners, and even cuddle buddies has become pretty normal in Japan. These rental services also offer girlfriends or boyfriends to the busy overworking people or the ones who are struggling to connect with others. The boyfriend or girlfriend renting is one of the most expensive rental services. Profiles of men and women, along with their pictures, are available on sites that offer these services. You can choose the person you want to go on a date with from their catalogs. During the date, you will have to pay for them hourly. Their transportation fee and fee for doing anything during the date with them is separate. The beginning hourly price of these girlfriend or boyfriend rentals is about $50 but it can get much more expensive. There's also a site where you can rent middle-aged men for just $10 an hour. The site provides you with profiles of men or osen with their information and what they will do for you if you rent them. The unmarried ones can be taken on dates while most others offer to be listeners for your worries. But besides romantic partners or companions, you can also rent family members in Japan. This service is often used by parents who are busy at work. They rent a mother or father to look after the child for the day. You can also rent friends to accompany you on concerts or cheer you on. These people renting services have become a booming business, particularly in Tokyo. The criteria for becoming a rental girlfriend is, however, very strict and strange. The girls applying for this position should not have boyfriends. They have to be at least 20 years old, beautiful girls who don't wear braces or have acne. They have to look feminine, fair, and thin. Moreover, these services do not hire girls who suffer from any disability, mental illness, who don't have smartphones or are mothers. 2. Blue Traffic Light This is a situation that arises when you have one word for two colors. Everywhere in the world, red light means stop and green means go. Simple enough. But not in Japan. Here, they have teal, turquoise, or aqua-colored go signs. It has nothing to do with the wiring, instead, it has everything to do with the Japanese language. Many centuries ago, the Japanese language had four words for four basic colors, namely black, white, red, and blue, and anything green was also described by the word for blue, ao. But later, the word midori, meaning sprout, began to be used for green, but it was also considered a shade of ao, and the country was unable to get rid of the overlap no matter how much it tried. That's why in official documents and conversation, green traffic lights are called Ao rather than Midori. The first traffic lights in Japan were introduced in the 1930s. These had a green light for Go but were referred to as Blue. This didn't settle well with the linguists who criticized the government for this confusion. So instead of changing the official description, authorities decided to change the lights while adhering to the international laws as much as they could. In 1973, a government mandate declared that all traffic lights be made the bluest shade of green, and the learners looking to pass their driving test have to prove that they can distinguish between red, yellow, and blue. 3. Stigmatized Houses Japan's stigmatized properties are residences where people have died, often in unpleasant or suspicious circumstances. These properties are usually shunned, and realtors despair of selling or renting them again. This dark aspect of the property market has recently gained media traction. In the Japanese language, these are called jikobuken, and their former occupants have died of unnatural causes or neglect. These properties can be rented or bought at incredibly low prices, provided you don't mind the haunted label that comes with the home or apartment. Currently, Many individuals and companies specializing in purchasing these stigmatized properties first buy them at massive discounts and then rent or sell them for profits in the future. Sometimes the houses are demolished and the land is resold. Under the Real Estate Transaction Law of Japan, 
the real estate license holder is legally obliged to inform the tenant or buyer of any known unnatural deaths that occurred in the property. The details of the incident are also to be disclosed in an important details and particulars document that is signed before the lease or sale contract. Death by unnatural causes is considered a psychological defect in the property, and the Japanese people aren't very keen to relocate to such properties. 4. Robot Hotel The Henna Hotel in Japan decided to make its services more efficient by employing robots. Travelers are sure to have a memorable stay at this hotel, staffed by multilingual robots in Nagasaki. Thank you for your visitors. <laughs> your name in the rooms card. On top of the fill in the phone number. The reception robots serve to check guests in, and the porter robots will carry luggage up to their rooms. The human staff is also available to the guests 24-7 in case a problem arises, but the primary staff consists of robots only, and believe it or not, you can actually talk to them too. Another quirky feature of this innovative hotel is the facial recognition feature. This means the locking and entry is keyless. Guests don't have to worry about forgetting or losing their key cards during the stay. But for those who aren't comfortable with facial recognition, the hotel offers key cards on request too. At the reception, robots will wait for you to check you in. And after your face scan is ready, you can open your room door using a face scanner. There are a few humanoid robots too at the Henna Hotel. A cloakroom has an automated robotic arm that will store your luggage for you if you arrive early or need to keep it somewhere after checkout. From air conditioning to lights, everything is automated and controlled by motion sensors. 5. Square Watermelons Square or cube watermelons aren't natural. These are actually grown into this shape and are commonly sold in Japan. These square watermelons are essentially ornamental and quite expensive as compared to normal round ones. They are priced as high as $200. These were intended to fit more compactly in the refrigerators and their shape also makes it easier to cut because they don't roll. The cube-shaped watermelons were first invented by graphic designer Tomoyuki Ono in 1978. He presented his unique watermelons in a gallery in Ginza, Tokyo. He also applied for and received a patent in the United States. These watermelons are grown in boxes and therefore take the shape of the container. These usually attract the wealthy or fashionable customers. In 2002, square watermelons were sold for $83 in Japan, which is two to three times the price of regular watermelons. These were created with practicality in mind, but their cost is an obstacle that doesn't allow everyone to buy these. In order to retain their square shape, the melons must be harvested before they are ripe, so this makes them inedible. After this cube melon became mainstream, many other shapes have been introduced like hearts and pyramids. 6. Kawaii Culture Kawaii means lovely, cute, adorable or lovable in Japanese. It is the culture of cuteness in Japan and can refer to items, people and non-humans that are charming, vulnerable, shy and childlike. These include cute handwriting, various genres of manga, anime, and iconic characters like Hello Kitty and Pikachu. This cuteness culture and the kawaii aesthetic has become a prominent part of Japanese popular culture, entertainment, fashion, food, toys, styling, and mannerism over the years. The term kawaii was originally coined in Lady Murasaki's 11th century novel called The Tale of Genji, where it referred to pitiable qualities. Nowadays, it describes the culture of celebrating all things adorable and also embracing fictional characters as the embodiment of positivity. Kawaii gained momentum in Japan, particularly because Japanese culture values youth, where men and women seek to emulate youth by adopting the kawaii style of dressing and lifestyle. It might also represent an escape from the long working hours and strict social pressures that the Japanese people face in everyday lives. Illustrations of girls are an early artistic form of kawaii, but nowadays there is a distinct Western influence present. Before the 1970s, the target audience of kawaii was younger schoolgirls, but now it's a success ticket for businesses in the Japanese market. It has permeated all aspects of life in Japan. The Harajuku area of Tokyo that was once associated with foreignness and difference has now become a pedestrianized area 
and the epicenter for everything Kauai. 7. Cuddle Cafes With marriage becoming a less desirable approach to romantic relationships, many people are finding alternative ways to fill the void of companionship. In Japan, a place called Soinea has come up with an unconventional and innovative solution for this. Soinea is a cuddle cafe where guys can pay money to cuddle with women. Sound strange? Well, yes, but for those suffering from loneliness, this just might be the place to enjoy a moment of comfort and affection. The Cuddle Cafe points to a deeper issue concerning loneliness. It emphasizes that it is human nature to express and receive affection from each other. The decline of intimacy and marriage has created a void in the lives of many, and there's no substitute for human companionship. The cafe is located in the crazy district of Akihabara. The so-called co-sleeping specialty shop offers its customers warm hugs and cuddles by pretty girls as they sleep. It's not cheap, though. The cafe charges a hefty fee for this service, but the desperate and worn-out workaholics are willing to cash out for anything as long as they get a little love and care in return. Inappropriate advances are strictly prohibited. The menu ranges from a 20-minute nap to a 10-hour-long full-night slumber package. If you want to pick the girl you want to lie with, or if you want to sleep on her lap, then you have to pay extra. Other add-ons include head petting, spooning, sleeping in the girl's arms, getting the girl to change her clothes, and more. All of these add-ons also cost extra. 8. KFC Christmas Yes, in Japan, it's not just Merry Christmas, it's Merry KFC Christmas. When the rest of the world is preparing hot chocolate and cinnamon cookies for a lovely Christmas Eve with the family, millions of Japanese families pile up in cars and trains to visit the nearest Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise. It has become a tradition for Japanese families to treat themselves to Kentucky Fried Chicken on Christmas Eve. Every year, an estimated 3.6 million Japanese families enjoy the scrumptious chicken from the American fast food chain adhering to the nationwide tradition. There are a lot of people in Japan who treat Christmas as a romantic holiday, similar to Valentine's Day, and couples mark the occasion by eating dinner in upscale restaurants. But the families just walk in and order food from KFC. December is probably the busiest month for the food chain in Japan, with more than 10 times the usual sales sometimes. Getting the KFC special Christmas dinner often requires ordering it weeks in advance, and those who fail to do so end up waiting in line for hours. This KFC tradition began as a corporate promotion thanks to Takeshi Okawara, the manager of the first KFC in the country. Shortly after opening in 1970, Okawara woke up one night as an idea popped up in his mind in a dream, a party barrel to be sold on Christmas. He dreamed of it after hearing a couple of foreigners at his store discussing how they missed turkey for Christmas. He thought a dinner of fried chicken would be a great substitute, so he began marketing the party barrel as a way to celebrate the holiday. The plan was super successful, so KFC took it to a national level in 1974 and named it Kurizumasu ni wa Kentucky or Kentucky for Christmas. The Harvard-educated Okawara became as successful as the trend and climbed the company ranks rapidly. He served as president and CEO of KFC Japan between 1985 and 2002. The party barrel became a national phenomenon as it filled a void and gave the Japanese people a Christmas tradition of their own. 9. Baby Crying Festival The Naki Sumo Crying Baby Festival is held annually in Japan. Here, the babies are held in the arms of sumo wrestlers in an open-air sumo ring. Two babies compete with each other in a short match in which the first child to burst out crying is proclaimed the winner of the challenge. The Japanese believe that a crying baby has the power to ward off evil spirits and that a strong, loud cry means the child will grow up to be a strong and healthy adult. The official name of this festival is Nakizumo. It has been held throughout Japan for more than four centuries. It originates from the folk belief that the loud cry of an innocent baby keeps the demons and evil spirits away from the community. The Japanese proverb, Naku Kowa Sodatsu, means crying babies grow fastest, and is also a source of inspiration behind the festival. Nowadays, the festival is held annually at the Shinto shrines across Japan 
mostly on May 5th, to coincide with Children's Day at the end of the Golden Week holiday. The customs and traditions of each festival vary depending on the location, but most of these focus on a ritualistic prayer for the good health of each baby and the competition between infants held in a sumo wrestling ring. A Shinto priest opens the festival with rituals to pray for the healthy growth of each baby. Each participant is provided with a handmade kabuto helmet to wear. The babies are held by professional or student sumo wrestlers who employ a variety of techniques to encourage crying like bouncing the baby in their arms or making loud or funny noises. If both the competitors haven't cried for a few minutes, the referees or judges put on traditional masks and approach them. The baby to cry first wins the competition and is bestowed with a blessing of good health. If both the kids cry simultaneously, the baby with the louder or longer cry is deemed the victor. 10. Plush Moomin Lunch Buddy For people who don't always have a date or friend accompanying them at restaurants, Japan has come up with a cute and adorable solution. A cafe called Moomin Cafe in the Tokyo Dome offers an amazing experience for those suffering from the sad solo dining dilemma. The cafe serves solo customers with a huge stuffed animal to keep them company. The Moomin franchise is based on a series of Finnish picture books about a family of hippopotamus-like creatures. The cafe offers food, drinks, and decor inspired by these characters. The staff at this anti-loneliness cafe approach the single patrons and inform them that someone would like to sit with them if they don't mind. That special someone is one of the stuffed toy characters from Moomin the cartoon. Tokyo is full of ladies who lunch and salarymen who could use a companion while they enjoy their meal and Moomin Cafe has made it their goal to make sure none of their customers feel lonely. They are provided a friend to share the stack of pancakes and Moomin-shaped food within all the locations of the cafe in Japan. Only in Japan would they give you a temporary friend to make you feel less self-conscious. 11. Limited Kit Kats The Japanese are incredibly lucky because they get to enjoy exclusive and delicious flavors of Kit Kats, more than 300 limited edition seasonal and regional flavors of Kit Kat chocolate bars have been produced in Japan since 2000. Most of these are exclusive to the country and are not produced elsewhere. Nestle operates the Kit Kat brand in Japan, and according to them, the brand overtook Meihi chocolate as the top selling confectionery in Japan between 2012 and 2014. No wonder the best Kit Kats are found only in Japan. The chocolate bar has taken a new meaning here. The traditional Kit Kat launched in Japan in 1973, almost 40 years after its launch in the UK. Initially, it was just the traditional chocolate with two chocolate wafers wrapped in foil in red packaging. The brand also owes some of its success to the name that bears a resemblance to the phrase Kitokatsu, which means definitely win in Japan. The gifting culture of Japan also played a huge role in Kit Kat becoming a mainstream product. In the 1990s, the first ever flavored Kit Kats were introduced in the market with the Orange Kit Kat and the Kit Kat Chunky. Japan also doesn't have a first listing fee, so any new line appearing in the market does not require the sellers to pay extra for initial sales. This means creating new flavors doesn't cost extra on the sales front. That's also why Japan has become a Kit Kat destination over the last 20 years. Now, almost every souvenir shop is decorated with a large variety of Kit Kats. The tourists flock to Don Quixote to pick up any funky flavors they can find. Some of the most popular exclusive Kit Kats include the Purple Sweet Potato Kit Kat from Okinawa, the wasabi-flavored Creamy Shizuoka, and the Yubari Melon flavor from Hokkaido. The most interesting ones are the Japanese rice wine flavor called Nihonshu, the miso-flavored Kit Kats, the cherry blossom version, and Japanese plum-flavored chocolates. A patisserie called Yasumasa Takagi has also been crafting gourmet Kit Kats using special ingredients since 2005. Tagaki's and the Kit Kat Chocolatory offer customizable Kit Kats and some incredibly limited flavors like green pistachio, yellow yuzu, raspberry, and orange cocktail noir. 12. Ramen Noodle Bath in recent years, ramen noodles have become a staple all around the globe, but the Japanese love them more than anyone. After all, they've actually built a ramen noodle spa. They've introduced their framed ramen noodles to bath therapy. 
It is located in Hakone Unesun Spa in Hakone. The spa offers visitors a chance to soak in a giant ramen bowl full of pepper-flavored pork broth. This ramen bath doesn't just give you first-hand insight into the life of a ramen noodle, it also does wonders for your skin. According to the spa, the collagen in the pork broth beautifies your skin and boosts metabolism. So after a soak in the broth, you will apparently leave with moisturized skin and a healthy glow that lasts for days to weeks. This spa has been around for a while now, and travelers looking for an authentic experience definitely try it. The baths here are shaped like a bowl of ramen and allow groups of people to bathe in pork broth. The spa also offers other insane baths. The wine bath is very famous too. It is supposed to be good for your skin and has rejuvenating powers. But the most amazing thing about it is bathing and drinking with your friends at the same time. Another popular one is the coffee bath, and it was actually the first one to be installed here. It is supposed to help you relax, heal your skin, and recover you from tiredness. The spa also offers a green tea bath as Japanese people have always loved drinking green tea for both the taste and the immense health benefits. Besides these, the Unesun Spa also offers a sake bath, a terrace bath, a fish bath, rodeo mountain water slide, a sauna, and more. 13. Bunny Island There is a small island in the inland sea of Japan that is famous around the world for being ruled by furry little rabbits. It's called Okunoshima Island and is part of the city of Takehara, Hiroshima Prefecture. The island is accessible by ferry from Tadanumi and Omishima. The island is also called Usagishima or Rabbit Island because of the thousands of rabbits that roam the island. These rabbits are mostly tame and tend to approach the people around them. The island has campsites, walking trails, and many historical sites for the tourists to explore. The island used to be a cultivated area prior to the Russo-Japanese War, during which ten forts were built here for the island's protection. At the time, three fishing families lived here. A chemical munitions plant was built on the island between 1927 and 1929. It housed a chemical weapons facility that would go on to produce more than six kilotons of mustard gas and tear gas. After World War II ended, the documents concerning the plant were burned and the Allied occupation forces got rid of the gas either by dumping, burning, or burying it. In 1988, the Okunoshima Poison Gas Museum was opened. Nowadays, the island is inhabited by a large population of rabbits. Majority of these are descendants of the rabbits that were intentionally let loose on the island when it was developed as a park after the Second World War ended. The rabbits were also used in the chemical munitions plant and for testing the effectiveness of chemical weapons. But those rabbits were either euthanized or put down when the factory was shut down. Hunting the rabbits is strictly prohibited on the island and therefore dogs and cats are also not allowed here. Tourists love interacting with these plush residents of the island and often feed them. 14. Passenger Pushers Believe it or not, but some train stations in Japan have actual employees who are hired for the sole purpose of pushing people into the mass transportation vehicle at a crowded stop, particularly during rush hours. In Japan, these pushers are called oshia. The term is derived from the term osu, which means push, and the suffix ya indicating that it's a line of work. The oshia makes sure that every passenger waiting for a train has boarded, making sure no one gets caught in the doors. These pushers were first brought to the Shinjuku station, which used to get immensely crowded during the rush hours. At the time, they were called passenger arrangement staff, and most of these workers were students who worked part-time. But nowadays, the station staff and part-time workers fill these roles during the morning rush hours on many lines. A special issue of Life magazine described a photograph by Brian Bake taken during the run-up to the 1964 Summer Olympics as the Tokyo commuter trains where riders are squashed aboard by white-gloved official pushers Back in 1975, the Oshia used to pack commuters into rush hour trains that were actually filled to an average of 221% of their designed capacity. A New York Times article mentioned white-gloved Oshia were still being deployed during the peak crowded times. The articles called them Tushi Pushers or Shiri Oshi. Over time, train lines in Tokyo have had significant reductions in overcrowding 
and now run at an average of 163% of capacity. Furthermore, increase in capacity due to the declining population of the country also reduced the need for these pushers. This in turn led to a decrease in the number of pushers, largely confining them to the Tokyo area in some of the more congested lines. 15. Karakuri Puppets The Karakuri Puppets are traditional Japanese mechanized or automated puppets that were made between the 17th and the 19th centuries. The gestures of these dolls entertain the viewers. The word karakuri means mechanisms or trick in the Japanese language. It usually describes any device that evokes a sense of awe amongst the audience by concealing the inner workings of it. The word karakuri derives from a Japanese verb karakuru, which means to pull, stretch, and move a thread. There are three main kinds of karakuri. Butai karakuri were life-size dolls designed to perform for the public, particularly in theaters. The zashiki karakuri were smaller devices that were used in homes. Most of these were just set on a table to perform a dance or beat some drums, but there were also many that were designed to serve tea or sake. These were significantly pricier and were usually owned by daimyo or other high-status people of the society. The third kind, dashi karakuri, or the festival cars, were large mechanical dolls, mostly used in religious festivals. In these festivals, the puppets were used to perform the reenactments of traditional myths and legends. There were also the less expensive variants of the traditional karakuri toys that were mostly made of tin. According to some scholars, the gestures and movements of the karakuri have inspired no, kabuki, and bunraku theater, Initially, the karakuri were only known to the upper-class Japanese, as they were the only members of society rich enough to afford these. But with time, these karakuri gained widespread popularity through their use as part of floats during street festivals like the Toshogu Matsuri in Nagoya. In the 19th century, Tanaka Hisashige, the founder of Toshiba, rose to fame for making technically sophisticated karakuri puppets. His masterpieces include Yumi Hikidoji, which is an arrow-shooting boy, and Moji Kaki doll, which is a letter-writing doll.